Happy Halloween. I thought it'd be only fitting to review something scary. Something scary bad. And that would be none other than Canyon Blaster Great Escape. Quite simply, this Arrow Mine Train is one of the worst roller coasters I have ever ridden. In this review, I will explain what makes this coaster so bad. When you think of mine trains, what do you envision? I think of a terrain hugging coaster focusing more on the visuals than the forces. Canyon Blaster has an awkward layout that doesn't really do this, and one look at the ride's history helps explain things. Canyon Blaster originally opened in 1972 at the now defunct Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee. There, this coaster was built in the woods, so the layout made a whole lot more sense there. And that is also why it was named Timber Topper in its early years, before being renamed Rock and Roller Coaster for its final two decades at Opryland. When Opryland closed in 1997, Premier Parks purchased five of their six roller coasters, including this Arrow Mine Train. Four of these coasters, including Rock and Roller Coaster, were sent to Old Indiana Fun Park. Premier Parks planned to revitalize this Indiana amusement park, but after Premier Parks purchased Six Flags in 1998, they abandoned their plans for Old Indiana. These coasters sat idle for years, and most would be scrapped, but one found new life. For the 2003 season, the Grey Escape announced they would be adding a new roller coaster called Canyon Blaster, but it wasn't exactly new. Like the Grey Escape's prior two coasters, Six Flags sent this Queensbury, New York theme park another hand-me-down. It was Opryland's old Arrow Mine Train reassembled and repainted red. Canyon Blaster was placed in the park's ghost town area, but it came at a cost. Canyon Blaster replaced both the ghost town train and, more disturbingly, the classic Tornado Dark Ride. Tornado may have been short and dated, but it was a charming attraction that was far better than the coaster that replaced it. RCDB states that Canyon Blaster has two trains, but in all my years visiting Grey Escape, I have only ever seen one train. The train is themed to look like a mine car and holds 30 riders per cycle, which is more than sufficient for a park like Great Escape. Even on weekends, the line usually isn't more than 15 to 20 minutes. The front row offers slightly better views than the other rows, but the forces, or lack thereof, are identical throughout the train. If you're a coaster enthusiast just looking to get the credit, just take the first available row and move on. There is no magic seat in this ride. This is one of the Arrow Mine trains with individual ratcheting lap bars, but Canyon Blaster features different padding than usual. It is a lot thicker, and it can make it a tight squeeze for taller adults. Once dispatched, you subtly turn to the right and head down this long straightaway, which gives you an unobstructed view of the now abandoned show building for the old Nightmare roller coaster. You then round a slow turn against this dirty water reservoir before ascending the ride's first and smallest lift hill. Canyon Blaster's first half is embarrassing. It is the definition of filler. It starts with a slow turn to the left before navigating a 270 degree downwards helix. The dip into the helix is awkward and jerky, despite how little speed you have. You then travel down this long straightaway before navigating this awkwardly tight turn that leads into the second lift hill. And this turn is really jerky and it'll throw you about. The first half made more sense at Opryland when it wound through the woods. The one redeeming quality with Canyon Blaster is that Grey Escape at least landscaped the first half well and placed a cavalcade of static figures for riders to look at. Canyon Blaster then ascends the second and larger lift hill, which stands 56 feet or 17 meters tall, and then you head down the ride's final element. Yes, that was not me misspeaking. There really is only one more element to this ride. Canyon Blaster treats riders to a 900 degree downwards helix. While this helix does build some decent speed by the end of it, you hit 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers per hour, it is bumpy. You feel every single track joint and you get a nasty jerk whenever you change elevation. One other funny thing about this helix is that Six Flags repainted only this part of Canyon Blaster for the 2021 season. 
presumably because it's the section of the ride that's adjacent to the main midway. And in fact, they only painted the sections of the helix that bordered that midway, so the helix is a beautiful bright red, while the rest of the track is beyond faded red. It's a really weird contrast to see. After this helix, you then rise up into the brake run, ending your lackluster 2,000 foot or 610 meter long journey. So what would I rate Canyon Blaster? I would give this Aero Mine Train a 2 out of 10. This coaster is disappointing. The layout is comically bad without all the trees to mask it. The first half does absolutely nothing, and the second half literally consists of just one helix. Combine some questionable tracking and transitions with that poor layout, and you have a recipe for a terrible coaster. Those static figures in the first half are the only thing saving this coaster from a 1. Now I know this rides more for families than thrill seekers, but it just doesn't do anything well. It's one thing to be boring, but it's another thing to be jerky when you do as little as Canyon Blaster. That is why I think it's one of the worst mine trains I have ever ridden. The only one I think that's worse is Olandis Volante at Rainbow Magic Land, which is a ride that's just as jerky, but much longer. So those are my thoughts on Canyon Blaster, the pitiful mine train at Great Escape. Have you been on this coaster? Do you think it's as bad as me? I would love to hear your thoughts about Canyon Blaster down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.